The title of my message, again, this is the fourth and last in the series of blessing. The title of my message is A God-Inspired Generous Giver. Now, that's what God wants you to be. He wants you to be a God-inspired generous giver. How many people know that God wants to inspire us? How many people know He wants to inspire us with His love, with His kindness, with His grace? And God is calling us. We are destined to be a God-inspired. Everybody say, He's talking about me. I'm a God-inspired. Are you a God-inspired, generous giver? Hallelujah. In every year of our lives, we want God to inspire us to be generous and loving. When we go to family reunions, have you ever go someplace with a bad attitude? Hallelujah. I want you to know, in the name of Jesus, I don't care how your attitude is going in, but you are God's representation wherever you are, and you need to be a God-inspired, generous giver. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's right. We've been learning from the scripture that our God is great, big, generous God of love. That's who God is. He's a great, big, generous God of love. We've been learning that God is a great, big blesser and that he is the giver of all good gifts. It says in James 1.17 that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from who? It comes to, all good gifts come down from who? From our Father, the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow or turning. Father, we just pray. And Lord, we ask that you would teach us this morning. Father, I pray for your anointing. Pray everyone would have ears to hear. And we'd go home changed in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you've come to learn something because I've come to share something that I believe is from the heart of God. Listen to what Ephesians 2.4 says. It says, but God being rich in mercy. Say that, rich in mercy. Does that mean that God is big in mercy, medium in mercy, or little teeny puny in mercy? God is big in mer mercy. God being, is your God rich in mercy? Is your God rich in mercy when you're having a really bad day? Does your God have mercy for you? Do you know when you're having, come on, when you're having a really bad day, the night you didn't sleep before that big test or the big appointment, when you needed to be at best and you just felt mumpy grumpy and you just felt like ugly and sighing, do you know that right then and there you need to acknowledge that your God is, is, is rich in mercy and you need to right then, right then on that day, you need to receive his mercy. Are you walking out the door with your bowl of cereal because you're running late and it pours all over your suit? I want you to say, hallelujah, my God is rich in mercy. He's rich in mercy. I'm on because it's as we acknowledge it, we learn to draw from it. You see, this is going to be some of the keys. We're called to sow what we reap. But if we, don't, if we don't receive from God, how can we sow what we don't have? Hallelujah. And our God is rich in mercy. Does this describe what you personally believe about your God. How do you, that he's rich in mercy. That he has great love for you. Is that who your God is? Is that, when you wait, how many people know that, that, you, that, that God is not made in our image? Somebody say amen. God is. His nature is eternal. Who God is is who he is. Somebody say amen. It doesn't matter how you feel about God or see about God. God's nature is eternal. And let me ask this question. Is God eternal nature rich in mercy towards you? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want you to listen to this next verse. And many of you have heard it or read it before. But I want you to grab hold of some of the phrases of this verse like you've never heard them before. And I want you to especially grab hold of the phrases that talk about God's nature. How many people know what your DNA is? I mean, I don't know why God was just very kind to me. He gave me good look DNA. You know, I don't know what I'm talking about. No, but come on, somebody, some people have ugly DNA. I got good looking DNA. Hey, hey, if you got it for no, I'm just kidding you. But how many people know your DNA? You you live based on who your DNA is. It helps shape your personality. It helps mold you. Okay. And um, how many people know God has a DNA? And that's God's nature. It's who God is. And as we read these, these next verses, I want you to grab hold of the parts of the scripture that talks about God's DNA, his nature. 
Because we need the flow and give out of God's nature. Hallelujah. It says in Psalm 103 verse 8. Listen to these phrases. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. Grab hold of that. The Lord is slow to anger. Somebody say, I need that. And abounding in loving kindness. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Listen to this. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward them who fear him. As high as the heavens are from the earth. You look at a young boy hallelujah, looking up at the sky and there's nothing higher than the heavens are from the earth. And then to say that God's love is, is, is higher and more illustrious and more wonderful than higher as heaven is from earth. How great is the love of God towards us. So great is his loving kindness. And then it goes on to say, as far as, as east is from west. As far as east is from west. And the east and the west never meet. So far he has removed my transgressions from me. Has anybody here who was a sinner say amen? Has anybody here who have ever blown it say amen? Well, you want to know something? As far as east is from west, God separated your sin. And that's who our God is. Hallelujah. You need to see that's his nature, it's his character. It's his DNA. Hallelujah. Just as a father, listen to this, is a character of Christ. Just as a father has compassion on his children. Man, I love my kids. I have so much love and compassion for them. Every parent say amen. So the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The nature of God, verse 17 but the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. And his righteousness to the children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember his precepts to do them. You want to know what God's DNA is? You want to know what his character? Listen to these phrases from these verses. This is God's DNA. Rich in mercy, great in love. Generous in love, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, hallelujah, abounding in loving kindness, forgiver of our transgression, compassionate Father, a giver of grace. Is there a hallelujah in the house? Hallelujah. And, and, and I want, this, is, this is the message these last few weeks. We need to be filled with God and His nature. Hallelujah. And then as we give, we need to give out of who God is. Amen. Not out of our resources, not out of our reservoirs, but we need to know God. Hallelujah. And if I boil the, all those parts of God's nature, I boil them down to four words. Mercy, love, grace, and forgiveness. Mercy, love, grace, and forgiveness. Say it with me. Mercy, love, grace, and forgiveness. Hallelujah and we need to tap into God's rich mercy, His great love, hallelujah, His amazing grace, hallelujah, His unbelievable forgiveness. And we need to, every day, we need to drink of those wells of mercy and wells of grace. And then we need to live our lives glorious, graciously giving from the wells of God. How do we want to be blessed? Well, first we need to, we need to receive with the heart to give. Receive his love to give his love. Receive his mercy to give his mercy. Receive his forgiveness to give his forgiveness. Receive his grace every morning and every day. So we would be giving his grace. Am I, am I making any sense? Hallelujah. Just to pull this to one example. Um, in, in, in Romans chapter 12 verse 1, Paul urges them to, to walk in his, God's mercy. And, and he shares how it would affect their lives. Listen to Romans 12.1. It says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies living and, ho living and holy a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. 
And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may be proved what the will of God is, and that which is good and acceptable and perfect. I want you to know if we would receive God's mercy, he urges us by the mercy of God. Hallelujah, if we would live in God's mercy, hallelujah, we'd be able to present our bodies as living sacrifice. Literally, our life would be a manifestation of us being a sacrifice to Almighty God. We would not be conformed to this world. I want you to know, worldliness would be so far from us. Hallelujah, we'd be transformed by our mind because we're being led by His mercy. Hallelujah, we're in the Word, hallelujah. And we would prove what is a good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. And now I want you to know today, just like Paul, I, want, I urge you to live by God's mercy. I urge you, I urge you in the name of Jesus to live by God's love. I urge you to live by God's grace. I urge you to live by God's forgiveness. I urge you to live by God's DNA. I urge you to tap into a mighty God and receive from him day by day. And I want you to live out that. I urge you, I, don't, I, I, I call you by the grace of God to live out of God's blessing, and out of his nature. See, we have a generous God and are called to live generous lives. (sighs) Generous lives. 1 Peter 3.8 says, To sum up all of you, be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, humble in spirit. Listen to me. Not returning evil for evil. Why? Because you receive good from God. So whether somebody gives you evil, you give them not what they gave you, you give them what God gave you. Hallelujah, you receive mercy from God, they give you evil, you give them mercy. Not returning evil for evil. It goes on to say, not returning insult for insult. Somebody gives you insult, do you give them insult back? You might want to give them insult back. Some of you spend two or three hours figuring out what's the best insult to give them back. That's a waste of your time. Hallelujah. They give you insult. What do you do? You tap into mercy and grace and forgiveness. Immediately, they give me insult. I give them forgiveness. Oh, you know what? Somebody says really rude to you. You know what? We would blow them out of stuff. Hey, you know, wow. What did you just say about me? I need to go home and think about it and pray about that. Because if I'm like that, that's really wrong. And I'm going to ask God to help me. So thank you for sharing that blessing with me. Amen. And I just want you to know I love you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't in, not in so for in so. No. We receive from God and we sow what God, who God is. But giving a blessing instead. For you were called for this very purpose. That you might inherit a blessing. Listen to Matthew 5.16 in the message translation. It's very powerful. It says, now that I've put you on a hilltop, on a a light stand, shine. Listen to this. Keep an open house. Be generous with your lives. Be open to others. And you'll prompt people to open up with God, the generous Father in heaven. See, we have a generous God. He's not little in mercy. He's rich in mercy. He's not, um, he, he doesn't have a, a, a weak grace. He has an amazing grace. Somebody say amen. And so, just like our God is a generous father, he wants us as his children to live glorious, generous lives. Hallelujah. There's the principle of sowing and weeping. It says in Galatians 6, 7, do not be deceived, for God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh um, will of his flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of his Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while we are doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who have the household of faith. The heart of generosity should extend to every area of our lives. But when I was praying, God showed me something about how glorious it is when that heart of generosity extends not only to love mercy and to the things that are the nature of God, but when the heart of the generosity flows into our money situations and our financial situations. And listen to what Proverbs 22.9 says. It says, A generous man will himself be blessed, 
for he shares his food with the poor. Isaiah 58.10 says, If you are generous with the hungry and start giving yourselves to the down and out, your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. Your shadowed lives will be bathed in sunlight from the message. And then 2 Corinthians 9.10 it says, listen to this. It says, The most generous God who gives seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your meals is more than extravagant with you. He gives you something that you then can give away, which grows into full-formed lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praises to God. God wants us to be so generous in every way, wherever we go. Why? So we'll bring praise to God. Proverbs 3, 9 says this. It says, Honor the Lord with your wealth. And from the first of all your produce, so that your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. Everybody say, back in the day. Back in the day, most of people's wealth was not in silver or gold. Back in the day, for many people, their wealth was their seed. Their wealth was the fruit that came off of their trees. Their wealth was the grapes that grew on their vine. Their wealth was the corn that grew on the stalks in their backyard. Their wealth was the fur, the not fur of their sheep, the wool of the sheep, the fuzzy of their sheep, whatever the sheep give us. And here, it says, whatever your wealth is, It says, honor the Lord with the wealth, with the first of your produce, with the first of your wealth. Your wealth has the ability to be worship as unto God. You honor God with it. Listen to this, Leviticus 2730. Because as I was studying this, God just showed me something so cool about this. Leviticus 2730 says, thus all the tithe of the land... Of the seed of the land, or the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. And it gives a list, if you read the whole context of this verse, it gives a list of other, you know, other, some people are farmers, some people are cattle herders back in the day. But whatever your income is made of, it says a tenth of that belongs to God. A tithe means a tenth. And every one of us, of all of our wealth, every paycheck that comes in, we should take a tenth of that should be given to God. Somebody say amen. But, but it's more than just given to God. Listen to this. It says it's holy to the Lord. It's the Lord. The word holy means a be set apart or not for common use. That tithe is God. How many people know when you give mercy, the mercy that you're given comes from God? When you give forgiveness, the forgiveness that you give is forgiveness that comes from God. How many people even know the love? When you give love, the love that you give is love that comes from God. Well, I want you to know, in your wealth, there's part of it that's God. The tithe is God. You give back to him the tithe. And it's the same thing of sowing is reaping as we sow his love. Hallelujah. And we need to look at the tithe. It's not like my money. Oh, God, this is yours. And I'm just casting it upon you. I'm giving it to you. Why? So you can bless me back so I can have more to give and more to sow and more to serve. Most people, when they talk about tithing, they go to Malachi 3.8. And I want you to listen to this with new eyes and new ears. Malachi 3.8 says, will a man rob God? Ow. It says, God is saying, you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. For you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, so there may be food in my house, and test me now, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Then I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that it will not destroy the fruits of the ground, nor will your vine in the field cast its grapes, says the Lord of hosts. All the nations Um, will call you blessed, for you shall be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. When I read that, I was, um, I I so much want to sow love and mercy. I sow the things that come out of my life. I want to be things that I've gotten from God. 
Okay? I, as God pours love and forgiveness in my life, I want my life to be an expression of what God is to me. And as I saw that, I saw the correlation. The tithes is God. He says, you've robbed me. Don't look at that just as the negative. He's trying to open our eyes that part of our income belongs to him. And just like love belongs to him, and as we receive love, we give love. And as we receive our wealth and receive our income, we should be just like we're so pumped to give love. Have you ever had a, a love victory where God gave you the ability to sow love in somebody that was a real trial to you? Come on. As any human beings here, have you ever had a forgiveness victory where, where you just needed to forgive somebody and you did not have that forgiveness in your heart? And then, but man, you, you prayed about it and you saw God and God gave you the ability. To, I mean, am I the only one here that has ever struggled, okay, with the parts of the nature of God? But you sowed that forgiveness and you were so pumped because it was, it was not just you loving them. It was you communing with God to love them. It was you forgive, communing with God to forgive them. Am I making any sense? And would it be if we would be communion with God in, in giving God our tithe? That's when we honor God with the first fruit. Because this is God. Just like love is God. Just like forgiveness is of God. Our tithes is of God. And we sow it into his kingdom. Hallelujah. Sowing and reaping both his nature and his resources just get that concept. We not only sow his nature, we sow his resources. And if we do that, we will receive more blessing from God. Here it says he'll rebuke the devourer. He'll open up the windows of heaven. People will see the blessing of our God because we give back to God what God has given to us. Am I making any sense? Hallelujah. Most of us know the verse in Matthew 6, 20. It says, store up, for your, store up for yourselves treasure in heaven. How many people have heard that verse? That we need to put our treasures in heaven, okay? That's a pretty common verse. It says, where neither moth nor rust will destroy, and where thieves do not break in or steal. Listen to this. For where your treasure is, there is your heart also. But I want us to jump just one or two verses to verse 24. And I want us to tie those verses together. It says, no one can serve two masters. How many people know that? You can't serve God and the devil. But it goes on. It says, for he will either hate the one and love the other or will be devoted to the one and despise the other. But then it goes on and says, listen to this. You cannot serve God and wealth. The NIV translate that. You cannot serve God and money. And as I was reading that, I was like, yes, yes. You see, you cannot worship, God, worship both God and money. You cannot worship both God and money. You cannot worship both God and your paycheck. However, you can worship God with your money. Hallelujah. You can worship God. Hallelujah. You, you can give back to God the parts that His, and you can worship God, and you can honor Him with the first fruits. Hallelujah. Do you want to be a joyous, generous giver? Do you want to be a joyous, generous giver? Do you want to be a God-inspired, generous giver in every part of your life? Because that's what, that's what God is calling us. It's not just in church. It's our life. Hallelujah. It's going to the grocery store. It's changing diapers. It's playing with your brother. It doesn't matter what you're doing in your life. Hallelujah. God wants you to be a, a God-inspired, generous giver. Hallelujah. I want you to, I, oh, it's so good to see you. Hallelujah. You were in the hospital. We were praying for you, so I just saw you. Hallelujah. Welcome back. Back from the dead. Hallelujah. God wants us to be a God-inspired, generous giver. And so I ask myself, how can we become God-inspired, generous giver? And I, there was a, 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 a phrase that came, came to me. It says, treat financial resources from God like you receive his nature and generously give them back to God and you'll receive more seeds to sow. Treat both your financial resources and God's nature the same as something to sow. So you have love seed 
you sow love seed. You have mercy seeds, you sow mercy. You have forgiveness seeds, you sow forgiveness. You have grace seed, you sow grace. You have financial seeds, you sow financial blessing. Hallelujah. They're all gifts from God. And I don't want you to separate them. They're all of God. And they're all for God. And they're all to bless us. And they're all to, to, to create this cycle of being a blessed giver and a blessed receiver. To give and it'll be given unto you as we read last week, press down, shaking together. Is there a hallelujah in the house? Amen. I hope you learned something today, and I hope you're inspired to hallelujah, to be a God-inspired, generous giver.